So here in Final Cut Pro and Apple Motion, we're gonna have a look at how we set this up in motion with the outline and the text ready to be edited in Final Cut Pro 10. And then we'll look briefly at how that title generator can be used in Final Cut Pro. So let's begin by cleaning up our timeline here a little bit in Final Cut Pro. So we'll delete the effect as we have it here on the timeline. And we'll jump now into Apple Motion and look at how we create this title. So I'm gonna hold down Command and the spacebar and type in motion, which is gonna allow me to open up Apple Motion. And what we're looking for here is to create a Final Cut title. So select Final Cut title and make sure the preset matches the format you're gonna be using for your editing. So for myself, I'm gonna be working in broadcast HD, 1080p, and I'm working in North America, so I'm gonna work at 29.97 frames per second NTSC format. And I'm actually gonna set the duration of my title to four seconds. And I'm gonna view it in timecode. So I'll press open here. So what will happen as soon as we've created our title in Final Cut Pro is that we have a text option. So I'm just gonna come up to my view options here and go to fit so we can see exactly what we have. So we have a title background, um, which would be an image or a video that we could drop into Final Cut Pro 10. And actually we're gonna remove that in a second. And then we have our text option here. So if I highlight my background here and press backspace, it's gonna remove it. And if we then go to file and save, I'm gonna save it as a new template. We'll call this title with, we'll call this title with animated outline. And we're gonna pop it into my titles and press publish. So once we actually get into Final Cut Pro, we'll now have this title with animated outline that we just created. So I have the version that I created before set up, but if we drop this down to the timeline, you can see now that we have an editable piece of type and we can begin to animate that and create the outline in Apple Motion, which is what we're gonna go ahead and do. So at this point, all we have is one editable type layer. So we'll jump back into Motion and I'm just using Command and the Tab key to move back into Apple Motion. And what we want here is two text boxes um, around about the middle. We'll do the basic layout first and then we'll bring the animation in. So first of all, for my type, I'm just gonna double click into it and come to my inspector and we'll just do the alignment um, for the type. So we're gonna align it to the center. We're gonna make it all caps and, and I'm gonna use Avenir and we're gonna use all caps and then we're gonna set the all cap size to 100%. So all the type is fully capitalized at the same size. And then we're gonna use Avenir and black for our first title. And we'll increase the font size here a little bit. And then I'm gonna just grab my selection tool here in Apple Motion and move this up. So I can see this snapping to the middle here. And I'm gonna move this just slightly above the middle of my video here. So we can do Command and Save. And you'll see now that when we drag a new version of this title with animated outline on, we have the text updated in it. So every update we do to our generator um, is gonna update on new versions of the generator that we drag down to the timeline. So then we're gonna duplicate our type layer. So I'm gonna to come to my type here and just hold down the Alt key and drag either up or down. And we have a duplicate of that layer. So if we drag it down until we're happy with the positioning. So I'm gonna call this subtitle and title. And for the subtitle here, we're gonna double click into the type and just make it light. So the same font, but we're just gonna use a light font and a slightly smaller font. Now we can edit the font size once we've got this into Final Cut Pro, but we'll leave it as a slightly smaller font size in here. So now we'll go ahead and create the rectangle. So we're gonna grab the rectangle tool from the middle here and stretch out a rectangle. And we'll just use the Select and Transform tool to make sure that's aligned centrally. So if I drag this now, you can see that I can move that magenta pink box around until it's centrally aligned. So in my properties, I should have a position of zero and I can type in zero here to make it perfectly central. And then for my shape options in the inspector on the left-hand side, I'm gonna turn off the fill and turn on the outline. 
So for this outline, we'll use a nice bright orange color. So we'll click on that. And you can see if we have the selection tool selected, we click away. We have that basic type generator set up. We can go to file and save. And if we drag a new version of that generator onto the timeline, we have the text there with its outline. Now we could do some of our animation in Final Cut Pro, but we'll go back into motion to look at how we can add some animation there. So for the titles first here, we're gonna animate these on. So I'm gonna to go to my title first, and actually I'm just gonna switch the order of these so that the title is above the subtitle in my layers. And what I wanna do is have this animate on um, quite quickly. So if we play this now, by around this point, by around probably just under one second, we wanna have the animation for this completed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to my properties in the inspector. And for my position properties here, before I add any keyframes, I'm just gonna set the position center to zero. And I'm gonna add a keyframe here. So, so I've deliberately gone ahead in time and added a keyframe for where I want this animation to finish. So now I'm gonna go back and we can retime this. We've got a lot of flexibility for kind of adjusting this, but we're gonna to go to the position here. I'm gonna click and hold on the position and just drag to the right until we bring that text off the screen. So I've set the point where I want this animation to finish around one second or just before one second. I've gone back to the beginning and then pushed that title off screen. So now if I play this, my title's gonna drop on. So I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. Just drag that back. So for the subtitle, I'm gonna do the reverse. I'm gonna have it coming up from the bottom. I'm gonna get the title to land first and the subtitle to kind of snap into position afterwards. So I'm gonna move this a little bit ahead in time. Make sure my subtitle is highlighted. Set the X position to zero so that it's completely central. And then add a keyframe here for the Y position for that subtitle. And then I'll come back. So just as the main title is coming into shot, I'm gonna have the animation for my subtitle begin. So I'm gonna drag the numbers here to the left, and that's gonna push that subtitle off screen. So now what we have is this, okay, which is nice and smooth. It pops into place quite nicely. So the next thing we wanna do is work on the rectangle. So what I wanna do here for the rectangle is add a mask for this. So if we go to our tools in the middle here, we're gonna add a rectangle mask. And we're gonna create a mask for the whole of this shape, which is actually gonna make it visible. So the rectangle mask by default is gonna make anything within that mask visible. So if I drag one of these green handles to the left, you can see it's now hiding the mask. So what I wanna do is actually invert this. So if I, with my mask selected, come to the mask properties, in the inspector and check invert. It's now hidden that rectangle. Then we'll come to, just as these type layers are about to snap together and begin the animation for that rectangle mask. So we're looking here for the size of the rectangle mask. And we're looking specifically for the width of that rectangle mask. So I'm gonna add a keyframe here for the width I'm gonna come ahead in time to just after these snap together. And then I'm going to reduce the width of that. In fact, I can type in zero and it's gonna make that invisible. So now what we have here, if we push the space bar and play this through, I'll just deselect everything so we can see it clearly. So we have a nice animation that brings on the type and brings on the rectangle. Now we could just have a look at where these are falling and we can bring that rectangle a little bit sooner so that these just dodge it. So we're just extending the period of time that that rectangle is coming on. So I just moved my keyframe there back a little bit. So I'll come back to the beginning, press the space bar and you can see it comes on nice and smoothly. Now, once that has been on for a few seconds. So we finished the animation here at around one second. We're gonna to come to around two seconds. So we'll have a short hold for this on screen. And what I wanna do for the rectangle mask 
is highlight these two keyframes. I can go to edit and copy and we're copying those keyframes. And then I can come to the end of my clip and go to edit and paste. And those keyframes will paste on. Now, at the moment, the keyframe is the wrong way around. So all I want to do is just come here and switch these round so that we're reversing the animation. So now we're removing that mask. And we want to do the same for the text as well. So I'm going to highlight this title, copy these two keyframes. So Command and C or Edit Copy. Come to the end of my clip paste those on and then reverse them. So now the title is moving off screen there. And we'll do the same for the subtitle. Grab those two keyframes, copy them, Command and C or Edit Copy. Come to the end, paste those on and then reverse them. And so now you can see we have our clip animating on nice and smooth, holding, and then animating off. So I think we can stretch these out a little bit more. So I'm just increasing the distance here. And while I'm increasing the distance between these two, it's meaning that we're going to get this type to move through this hole in the edge of the rectangle once it's opened up. So I'm trying to get the timing of that just right. So around about there will be good. So let's play that through. So there it is. So we have our text animating on, holding for a couple of seconds, and then animating off. Let's pause that. So now if we go to File and Save, we can come to our project in Final Cut Pro and we can drag down our generator and play it through. That's looking pretty good. Timing's not quite perfect, but you can see how you can tweak it by moving the keyframes around and refining that edit. So let's pause that and let's just have a look at one other element that we can change here. So if we come back to motion, we're going to select the rectangle and under brush color for the outline, if we click in here, we can go down to publish and we can publish the color, which means that you'll be able to change the color of that outline in Final Cut Pro. And we can also publish the width of our stroke as well. So we'll publish this width here and save that. And then we'll bring down the title. So for the title here now, once it's animated on, we can come up to the inspector and select a piece of our type. Increase the, the size of our type. And we can move this around as well it will still work with the animation. We need to be a little bit careful, but we can slide it around a little bit. And we've got control over the editing tools as well. So we can increase the tracking if we want to, modify the size and the animation will still work. So if we come back, you can see, even though we've made those slight modifications in Final Cut Pro to the type, we've still got the animation working for us. And again, if we come to the generator options here, you can see we can modify the border width here and we can also change the color of that outline. So we've got a nice level of control over the generator that we've created. And there's lots of other options for publishing different things in Apple Motion to Final Cut Pro 10, but I hope that's been useful. It's a quick introduction into how to create animated titles in Apple Motion. And if you have any questions about how this is done, then leave a message below and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.